to the chase, evidence-based. Pull up a chair, let's get this straight. Peptide buddy, he's your peptide buddy. We've talked about Retatratide some time ago when it began growing in popularity, and I changed the way I organized these videos, so we're going to review the peptide again and in its entirety. I do like this one image I had in the previous video where semaglutide was like a house, or zepatide is a bigger house, and Retatratide is the whole Gatsby estate. Because it's a simplistic way to compare the complexities of these peptides, though in reality it's a bit more nuanced than that because I wouldn't argue that Retatratide is a castle to semaglutide's cute little cabin, or a Lamborghini to its Mini Cooper, because mechanistically they are similar but differing, yet what makes Retatratide interesting and novel in a way is that it's considered a triple receptor agonist. In the past, we've talked about the financial and clinical implications of slightly changing compounds to not only gain new pharmaceutical patents, but to also induce novel targets within the drug's mechanism itself and also lend itself to new lists of unknowns. For instance, semaglutide is a pure GLP-1 agonist. Terzepatide is a cousin in a way because it also induces GIP agonism. Retatratide agonizes GLP-1 and GIP but also glucagon receptors, which you'll see in research labeled GCGR. Now, all these compounds are more or less being looked at in similar contexts, but with more additions to what they agonize or processes they stimulate. There's in general more unknowns about how they come to work, or at least how these new features do. But at its core, there are three key reasons why GLP-1 agonists like semaglutide work the way they do to decrease appetite and improve measurements of metabolic risk. They slow gastric emptying, stimulate insulin secretion, and decrease glucagon release. People have expressed interest in learning about retatratide, and we've talked about it about a year or so ago, so we're going to recap how it works, where it's headed, what the clinical research shows thus far, and adverse effects we're aware of at this point to keep in mind. So retatratide was developed by a big player in the game, Eli Lilly and company, and it's a relatively new drug, which is why we're hearing more and more about it currently. At the beginning of 2024, I predicted it would be a hugely discussed peptide this year, but perhaps that'll be more of a topic of convo next year or in 2026. But with the way semaglutide is running currently, I don't know if it'll ever gain the same hype or intervene within a similar marketplace. And the research hasn't been profoundly dissimilar from that of semaglutide, boasting significant weight loss numbers, cardiovascular and metabolic metrics. There appears to be a dose-dependent increase in weight loss, however, with a possible plateau effect as 8 to 12 milligrams range is reached, with similar effects seen in patients with metabolic associated fatty liver disease. So similar to its competitors, the clinical interests that guide retatratide's current phase 3 investigation include features of obesity and diabetes, as well as non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Findings in phase 2 trials showed weight loss ranging from 17.5% to 24.4% at 24 and 48 weeks respectively, as well as what we said favorable effects on fat surrounding the liver. I imagine a big contributor to Retatratide's success will be the extent to which its proposed novelty serves as an excitatory factor for distribution. As in, in clinical trials, it's already developing what will be its eventual advertising campaign, the power of three, a triple hormone receptor agonist. Which sounds cool, yes, but do we actually know what that means? And the answer is yes and no. Yes, we know generally speaking the sites of agonism or what the compound stimulates, GLP-1 receptors, glucostabentin, insulinotropic, polypeptide, and now glucagon receptors too. However, the extent to which this novel target plays a role in its anti-obesity and metabolic enhancing effects appears to be nebulous and rather unknown. However, like GIP agonism, there seems to be in a way, entanglement with processes involving energy balance. GIP stimulation is theorized to work synergistically or in favorable combo with GLP-1 to promote glucose-lowering effects via insulin secretion, which lead to the touted effects of decreasing metabolic markers like HbA1c and delaying gastric emptying, thereby affecting appetite. Furthermore, agonism of GIP in and of itself should further promote glucose uptake while preventing glucagon release. Normally, glucagon and insulin share an intricate relationship to control insulin release and appropriate utilization of glucose. However, this function is impaired in the setting of diabetes and insulin resistance, where even in states of hyperglycemia or high blood sugar, glucagon release continues to enhance glucose production, which is the opposite of what you'd hope for in a hormone intended to control for hypoglycemia or lower blood sugars. And furthermore, agonism of glucagon receptors themselves are thought to stimulate breakdown of fatty acids while inhibiting their synthesis. Synergistic 
realistically increasing insulin release and increasing energy expenditure, which more or less would create a more favorable environment for continued weight loss via these processes we touched on to increase energy expenditure, like breakdown of fatty acids, for instance. As researchers put in phase two results published in the New England Journal of Medicine, and I quote, incorporating GCG receptor agonism may further reduce energy intake, increase energy expenditure, or both, thus potentially enhancing efficacy, end quote. By the way, if you're still watching, engaged, and haven't yet fallen asleep by this bedtime story, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. It's the best way to support a channel like mine, a small peptide YouTuber just trying to make his way through the world. Additionally, if you're looking for another way to further support the channel, details to our Patreon will be in the description below. So, moving on, Retatratide's half-life is about six days, supporting weekly administration. Although weight loss, diabetes, and fatty liver are the big three of current research, future targets of investigation appear to be osteoarthritis and sleep apnea, which are two conditions oftentimes caused by and exacerbated by obesity, which have severe impacts on the lives of those affected. So, as expected, gastrointestinal side effects are the most predominant, with possible effects on elevation of liver enzymes, increased heart rate in some, and surprisingly, skin hyperesthesia in a decent number of individuals, which is an abnormal increase in sensitivity to external stimuli. And like these other similar compounds, as we already essentially mentioned, there do exist favorable findings, perhaps even more so on not only weight loss, but also on markers of metabolic syndrome, like waist circumference and other things like blood pressure. However, discontinuation appears to be pretty significant, somewhere between 15 and 20% in the trials done so far. So with increased agonism of different features within the same pathway, perhaps the predominance of gastrointestinal outcomes is higher, thus leading people to stop. However, longer-term studies are needed to not only assess efficacy in this myriad of different contexts, but also to determine appropriate dosing regimens to maximize efficacy while minimizing adverse effects, while continuing to assess for potential risk and safety side effects, like for instance with the finding of skin hyperesthesia. Overall, retatratide is a fascinating compound, certainly more to come on it, perhaps not as quickly as I once expected, but it'll be here, and continued research will seek to investigate the extent to which agonism of GI and glucagon receptors are tied to synergy with GLP-1 agonism. Finally, I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Definitely leave a like, subscribe, comment below. Any questions, concerns, feel free to reach out. But most importantly, I hope you have a happy holidays and a great day. You take care. Cut to the chase, evidence-based. Pull up a chair, let's get this straight. Peptide buddy, he's your peptide buddy. Cut to the chase, evidence-based Pull up a chair, let's get this straight Peptide buddy, he's your peptide buddy